Good morning from day uh, three or four or something from Web Summit uh, 2021 here in Lisbon. Uh, I'm Rhett Power with Forbes.com. Uh, it's a real f uh, pleasure to sit down this morning. We're going to get an er we're getting an early start to the day, Alex. I don't know if you are warmed up yet. I'm not quite warmed up yet, but maybe we I'm, can. I'm going to main stage from here, so we better warm up. You know, <laughs> we better be ready for the next next gig. Um, but Alex, uh, you are the CEO of Celsius and. You know, we were we were talking yesterday a little bit about how the banking system is not uh, is not your friend, right? What does what the T-shirt say? Banks are not your friends. Banks are yeah. not your friends. Um, what do you mean by that? So, look, I mean, banks do an exceptional job for their shareholders, mm -hmm. but they've stopped caring for their customers. So, if you think about banking 30 years ago, it was mostly community banks or or regional banks that basically mm -hmm. really you knew your bankers <clears throat> they they bought pizza at your pizza shop they filled up you know that gas in the gas station today all that got obfuscated and when you take your mortgage it's being sold to some guy in japan about yeah. a, a week later right right so so i think uh, today uh, bank executives are only focused on delivering profits to their shareholders and where do they get those profits? They get that from their customers. And every quarter they have to increase their profits, so they go back and charge more fees, inactivity fees, and overdraft fees, and ATM fees, and you name it, right? Right. And also they basically use your money to make money. So, and most people don't understand that money makes money, right? So, so, right. Uh, so we decided, Celsius decided to create a, a platform, like Costco, if you think of Costco as a kind of a uh, a, a warehouse full of products that were uh, curated in your best interest, right? Best price, best quality, uh, really easy to get in, get out, and get what you need. We want to create the same thing for financial services, and it starts with earning yield, having your money work for you, not just you work right. for your money, and cheap loans. And we're planning to add many, many other things on top of it, credit cards, other things, swaps that allow you to really get access to all the best things you need, but also at the best cost, like things that act in your best interest instead of in the bank's best interest. Is that what crypto does? I, I mean, you could argue about crypto and, and, and on many levels, and, and um, but what's what's really interesting to me is the fact that it's now that it's the, the people want to regulate it. That tells me that it's legit. Yes. Right? <laughs> um, and when the cops show up, <laughs> you know. Um, how is crypto going to change how we do business? How is it going to change how we invest? I mean, the other thing I think is really interesting is it gives people that maybe maybe you're middle income, maybe you're uh, maybe you're young. Uh, my teenager, for example, you know, uh, is is really fascinated by crypto. How is it going to change how we do everything? Yeah, so crypto, cryptography, right, existed since World War II. We used it uh, to actually beat the Germans, right? And uh, uh, it evolved over a long period of time, and now it got to the point where we're effectively leveraging things like blockchains and decentralization and open ledgers, all using cryptography to create a new set of rails, like a new highway that bypasses this, the toll collectors that exist in our lives. So banks, uh, insurance companies, uh, uh, you know, all these telephone companies, they were all toll collectors. Very, very uh, 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 exceptional toll collectors. They made a lot of money for themselves. And now they're being replaced by decentralized services like voice of IP, like email, like, like uh, all the things we use on the internet, right? So that has never happened in finance, right? You, you could not go and bypass uh, your bank and transact with peer-to-peer uh, -peer or with somebody else without a trusted intermediary. And what cryptography allows us to do is basically uh, uh, transact with each other and reap the benefits. So I'll give you a simple example, right? Uh, if I deposit money in a the bank, they pay me 0.1%, uh, they take the same money and lend it to you on your credit card the next second at 24%. And they keep 23.9% to themselves. And then at the end of the quarter, the CEO brags about how smart he is that he made so much money. But really, he stole from me and he overcharged you. 
Right. Now, how about if I earn 9% and you pay 11%? Is that a fair deal yeah. where we eliminate the bank in the middle and we replace it with a peer-to-peer -peer system? So, so what it allows us to do is create a new financial system and we get to rewrite the rules. And then we have to decide, are these new rules and the new crypto-based platform, are, are they going to be like Wall Street? Are we going to just replicate that? Or are we going to create, create a new world like Voice of IP where, again, we don't pay anything to anybody when we talk to each other, right? On right. Zoom or WhatsApp and so on. So, so what Celsius is really focused on is make sure that we create that world and not a copy of Wall Street being created on crypto, which is like if you look at what Coinbase does, they charge you 7% to buy your Bitcoin, not a good version of crypto, right? right. So if you read Satoshi's paper, you know, the peer-to-peer -peer cash system, right? His vision or her vision was about what we're talking about here and not, oh, let's create a version of, of, uh, of the Wall banking, Street, right. of the banking world, exactly. So, so we're fighting for the people, we're fighting to bring power back to the people and, and make sure that all of us get to benefit from it. And, and, and really we lost this, we lost the dream, we lost the passion, we lost this light, being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel because life got really, really hard. You can't earn money on your money, Right. You can't really uh, 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 qualify for almost any loan. Right. Your credit cards are tearing you apart. Your right. student loans, everything else. And what Celsius is about is changing your habits, right? Is changing bad habits into good habits. Migrating from living off the future, borrowing. When you, when you use your credit card, you're borrowing from the future, right? And then when you get to the future, like, oh my God, I don't have any money, I have to pay this debt. You can never pay it off. And you can never pay it off, exactly. Instead of that, how about we save into assets that increase in value, like Bitcoin or Ethereum or others. And then when you get to the future, guess what? You have more money in the future because you have uh, interest, you have uh, compounding interest, you have appreciation of the principal. And, and, and that's why when you look at Bitcoin or Ethereum, Ethereum appreciated over a thousand percent in the last year. Right now, I'm not saying it will all, always go up and so on, but at least you have a chance for appreciation. Try to put your money in bonds or put it in a bank and see what happens to it in a year, right? You're guaranteed not to appreciate it. You can't create any wealth anymore. Exactly. I mean, you can't, not that way. I mean. Exactly, and the government at the same time, uh, the Fed goes and prints uh, uh, trillions of dollars which dilute you, so if you don't do anything with your money, you're actually losing money. You just don't realize it because your salary is not going up, but there's more and more money being printed and you're effectively being push backwards compared to other people who are keeping the value of their assets uh, uh, away from the dollar. How do how does how does the how do how do, how do we successfully or how how is how is this going to play out in the next five to ten years as governments try to regulate crypto? What's your view on how that's going to play out? So, so I think we already crossed the chasm as far as uh, early adopters, right? And we were at mass adoption right now. Right. Half of Americans have crypto. Uh, in Europe, it's also a pretty high percentage. And what it, what it means is that if you're a politician and you want to shut down crypto, you're just not going to get reelected. So for self-survival purposes, it's not because we are so good. For self-survival purposes, I think most politicians are going to be like, you know what? Too late. Let's regulate it. Let's tax it. Let's not shut it down because we're just not going to get, everybody's going to hate us, right? right. So, so we can't get reelected if everybody hates us. Uh, Isn't it the same effect though if you say let's tax it, if, we, if you say let's regulate it? Yeah, usually those two go together. And regulated usually also means, uh, okay, let's protect the people that may not understand what they're investing in, right? So maybe we, we're not going to allow people uh, who are not accredited access to all the assets. We might allow them access to only the assets that we think are safe. In that, in that, wrong too. I don't know if it's wrong. I just think that uh, uh, the laws were written in 1940, and and those laws apply to a time where you couldn't find information. Today, anyone can access information on the internet, and preventing equal access for people or deciding that because you're poor you must be dumb uh, is, is just not 2021 or 2022 so so I think the SEC and other regulators just need to really rethink the laws and again Congress is the one writing laws not the SEC right the, and, and Gensler said that in his hearing he said look I'm enforcing the laws you gave me if you want me to do something else pass new laws right which I agree with but but I think 
uh, we're going through such a transformation that it's very hard for both lawmakers and regulators to know what to do. A little bit more time has to pass for us to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And then we can decide, okay, here's a new asset class called cryptocurrencies. This is how we regulate it. This is how we tax it. This is how we uh, uh, supervise it. I, 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 you know, I want to talk to you a little bit. I want to back up a little bit. Um, you were sort of early on uh, and, and one of the sort of creators of voice over IP, uh, now money over IP. Um, so you were, we were talking about you know Web 1.0, Web 2.0. Now we're in, this is like money over IP is is, is Web 3.0. Uh, Web yeah. 3. What does that mean? Like what do you mean when you talk about that? So so you know Web 1.0 was infrastructure. We we had to put the fiber in the ground. We had to put invent protocols like TCP/IP, UDP, you know HTTP and so on. Uh, layer two or ver uh, Web 2 was all about social media and other type of. Uh, all of us getting interconnected. And Web3 is about, again, the metaverse, about money moving to the internet, right? All the money in the world is going to migrate from kind of legacy systems. So think about all, what is bigger, uh, email and the voice of IP or all the money in the world, right? So, <laughs> so I think most people that uh, think about uh, uh, crypto, they think, they think it's a sh side show and it's like geeks and cypherpunks and uh, uh, toying with uh, cryptography. Right. But really, again, this is the infrastructure, the underlying uh, uh, infrastructure that will allow us to put value or move money into the metaverse, right? And, and uh, you know, and, and again, and there we have a fight. We have a fight between companies like Facebook and others who, who want to dominate the metaverse. Facebook is more than half of the internet today. Or are we going to do it in a decentralized way where we all control? We don't have any toll collectors. We don't have anyone else own our data, right? So, so that's where the battle is on right now for Web3. I think a lot of people, and, and, I, and that's why, I was, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, but one of the things I think people, you just said a term that I think people are like, what is that? Until last week, nobody had heard of the metaverse. What, and, but it's, it's a term that you've been familiar with for a long time. What is that? Like what? Well, it has many names, right? So Web3 is one version. Uh, uh, what does it look like? Like, what, 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 what is it like? <laughs> well, if you want to know what it looks like, look at what your kids are doing every day, right? Like uh, the, 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 the kids, you, the games your kids play where they actually have a persona in uh, a, a, a reality uh, that is online. For example, Roblox or other types of games where basically uh, they have a, a, a physical representation, not physical, sorry. Uh, a, an uh, avatar. Avatar or representation. And they're whoever they want to be in that game, right? They're not who we are in the real world. They create their own persona there and then they go and do things. They build whole worlds, uh, they go and travel, they, uh, they earn points, they fight with each other or whatever the, whatever the game is. Uh, and again, you can uh, transact, right? So if you have digital money, Right in that world, you can transact with each other. You can. So that's the connection. Exactly. So, so suddenly everything we can do in the real world can also be done in the in the uh, in the meta world or Web three, and in that world, uh, again, for, for young people, I'm talking about uh, teenagers or, or younger, they their uh, persona in their uh, in their game is much more important than their in the real world. Right. Right. They might be, for example, the best in the world in that game, and there might be millions of people following them because they're basically a celeb, they're an NOG uh, uh, representing the best of skill. Just like we watch Elon Musk and say, wow, well, he, he can build cars and, and uh, rockets. <laughs> the same way uh, kids look at a 15-year-old who's the best in the world in, in Warcraft or in some other thing. So, so the opportunity for all of us is really to to create these new worlds, again, to fix our world by making sure that these new worlds are created to represent the best of humanity. Because as we know, when we look at our real world, it's getting harder and harder for us to fix things. And the opportunity, like I was saying before, with money, for example, are we going to create a new, new money that is supporting 8 billion people, that equalizing the opportunity? Right providing everybody the same access, or are we going to create the same like 1% versus 99% with, with limited access, with keeping people behind and so on. And, 
you know, it democratizes the whole world. Like, right? Exactly. Right? It yes. gives people in Africa. It gives people in Central America. It gives people in South America. Everybody has equal access. It, and right. intelligence is distributed equally on the planet. Right? It's not like intelligence is in the water system in San Francisco. And if you drink that water, you are somehow magically can, you can become go to Stanford, a world then. entrepreneur. Look, right. uh, more than half of the best companies in San Francisco, all immigrants who came to San Francisco and built companies over there. So if, 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 if they were somewhere else, they would be building it somewhere else. So they could build it in the metaverse, right? So, so what, what, what Celsius is all about is really making sure that we build those worlds in an equal way, right? Making sure we give everybody the same opportunity, even if they don't have the skills. I mean, one of the unique things that we do, for example, is that we don't require you to be a world expert. You can join the ride on Celsius that, like, for example, I help create yield, but you can join the ride by piggybacking on what I'm doing and you don't need any of my skills. You just need to decide right. you want to be on the same bus and you want to take the same ride, right? You like a different bus? Great. We'll give you access to a different bus with a different ride, financial ride, right? Right. So those are all things that, that I think are easy to do in the digital world, but very hard to do in our traditional world because, again, the, the people who are the 1% are, want to make sure that the 99% works for them, services them, does everything. Otherwise, the system, the pyramid, doesn't work, right? And we want right. to change the pyramid into a circle where everybody has equal access. You, you're four years, Celsius, Celsius is four years old. You are now managing, what, $30 billion in assets. Yes. Um, that's one of the yeah. craziest stories in history. Yes. Um, I think it's the, it's the fastest, it's the fastest growing, growing asset manager in, the, in history. Yes. Um, and you did it in the pandemic. You did it in a time where there was, in, in the last two years, that the world has been in complete turmoil. And it, did that change your, your thinking, your business model? How did that all impact? How did the pandemic, I mean, I'm just curious, how did the impact really change, or did it change your thinking? Well, we, our plan has not changed since 2017. So, so the plan was exactly the same. You can see our white paper, it's still published. You can look it up on Google. Right. And it was to basically give access or bring the next 100 million people into crypto. Uh, because most people, again, back in 2017, they had no clue. When you talk to them about uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, they had no clue what you're talking about. They're like, uh, what is that? How does it work? What is right. the blockchain? Yeah, no, uh, no idea. And so on. So, so our, our job was basically to create, like experts, uh, experts can go and do DeFi or do uh, uh, basically dabble in cryptocurrencies because they understand private keys, they understand how the blockchain works, they know how to manage all that, but 99% of the people have no clue. Right. And what they need is an interface that they're comfortable with, an app on their phone that does more or less what their bank tells them to do, but magically acts in their best interest. And when, when so the, the fight was not over cryptocurrencies, the fight was over trust. Will hundreds of millions of people trust some crazy guy on the internet who says, I have an answer for you here, don't do this, do that. Uh, and by the way, I'm, I put hundreds of millions of dollars of my own money, come join uh, the same ride, and you can earn yield, you can take loans, you can do everything you, you, you thought you need a bank, you can do it in a way that is always in your best interest. And frankly, we didn't know if it will, will work. I mean, it's not like we, uh, so we, we didn't get, take money from VCs. We went to the community and said, we want to build this for you. Here's our white paper. Right. Do you want to fund it, right? So the community actually funded it. Okay. And the people who funded it were the first customers. They were the, the yeah. early adopters. And then they went to their friends and said, wow, they actually built it. It works. Why don't you join as well? So more than half of our new users come from our existing community and, and it's just been phenomenal How many growth. users now? 1.5 million users. Wow. In, in, and it's uh, obviously like a hockey stick. It's, it's kind of all organic too, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's all organic, growing faster and faster. And again, we, again we're, the, we're just... What's the, average, uh, what's the average investment somebody puts in when they start? Yeah, so normally people will put a few hundred dollars and immediately withdraw it to see, okay, can I actually also can get, get it out? Right. Or is it just a one-way Hotel California <laughs> type of uh, system? Then they'll deposit it again or put move money in again and, and wait a week or two to see, okay, are they paying us interest or not? Okay, they're paying. Okay, let's see how long they're paying. So they'll wait a month or two and uh, normally uh, we will get nine different uh, transfers over the first year on okay. average. And uh, right now our average account is about 
uh, $30,000, which okay. is a lot. That's a lot. That's why our, our slogan is unbank the banked, the rich people, right. then bank the unbanked. So we're gonna use this cohort of few million rich people, which I mean, in, in compared to India or China or whatever, right. We're going to use that cohort to fund our ability to go and bring the billion people who may hold only 20 or 30 or 50 dollars. And today the blockchain isn't ready either. Like today you do a transaction on Ethereum, the fee, the, the gas fee may be 70 dollars. Right. So if you only have 50 dollars, how are you going to come on? So, so we have to wait until 2022 for ETH2 and other improvements to be able to really unbank, not just unbank the bank, but also bank the unbank, because transaction costs are gonna to drop to a few pennies, and we'll be able to really open it up to anybody. So this sounds like it's really easy to use, and, yeah. and, and, and so. Uh, you download the app, you uh, install it, uh, celsius.network, just network. search for Celsius Network on your uh, Google or uh, Apple. Celsius with crypto, Celsius. Just yes. Celsius Space Network, right. and, and you'll find it in a second. Uh, uh, and you have to do KYC, you have to tell us who you are because we want to stay right. uh, uh, compliant to all the laws in the different countries. And then uh, you already have to have digital assets. So you have to have Bitcoin or Ethereum or, or stable coins. We give you an address, you move it in, you wait, you get the interest, right? You can earn 8.8% .8 on, your, on your money, on your stable coins, which is obviously 100 times more than your bank. Right. And, and uh, again, your money works for you. You sleep, you go on vacation, you, you work, your money works for you. So if you make small incremental uh, a, a investments, right, in any of these assets, they also accumulate interest, they also compound, and you can see your wealth grow, right? And then the beauty of it, you can take a loan against it, just like the rich people do, they don't sell assets. Right, our president uh, Donald Trump hasn't paid any taxes. Why? Because he's borrowing against his asset. Right. Uh, Jeff Bezos has not paid any taxes. Why? He's borrowing, borrowing against his, his Amazon asset. stock. Yeah. The Tesla CEO, Tesla and Jeff Bezos hate each other, but they do the same thing when it comes to money. Right? They borrow against their assets. So here you can do the same thing, even if you have two hundred dollars of crypto, you can borrow a hundred dollars against your assets, not pay tax, and basically defer your taxes while you're allowing your Bitcoin to continue appreciating. Alex, I, I could talk to you all day because I, I, I think there's so much to learn. And the thing is, it's, it's early in this, so you can learn fast. Yes. You can learn how this works fast, and you can get involved. Uh, even if you're a teenager or 20-year-old, you can put a little away now uh, <coughs> every month uh, and start uh, getting involved in, 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 this, uh, in, in crypto. Alex, thank you. I've got to have you back too because I want to talk about what's after this. Like, what is Web for? Because I'm sure you had like <laughs> some ideas. Yeah, you have some ideas. I know, and uh, because I think you're thinking, you're thinking 50 years ahead yes. of, of everybody else. I, I joke my, that they, I live in the future all by myself, and <laughs> some of the time uh, everybody else shows up as well. Sometimes they go somewhere else. It's, it's not. Uh, uh, but. Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're going through these transformations. It's, uh, it's rapid. It's exactly, it's faster and faster and faster. And uh, it just, it, it was, it's, there's never been a better time to be a young entrepreneur or a young innovator. Uh, you can choose from so many things. And like you said, you can catch up with the best of us in six months. You can catch up and be the best in the world in the metaverse or in crypto or in the Web 3.0. Well, good luck on main stage in a few minutes. Yeah, thank hey, you. We'll, we'll be in touch, man. Thanks. Uh, this is Rhett Power with Forbes.com here at Web Summit, the last day. Uh, uh, join us for some more amazing interviews as we go through the day.